In my attempts to help entrepreneurs start businesses, one of the things that I found is that if you can start a business on the side being a freelancer, you can easily parlay that, convert it into a full-fledged business with a whole portfolio of different products or services. One of my mentors, Jay Abraham, started out this way. He started out by looking at companies and different kinds of businesses that exist that have products and services that are not being maximized in the best way possible based on something called copy, which is their messaging, which is their information that they put out to acquire clients, find prospects, or convert them into the buyers. And he was able to optimize these businesses by going in and saying, I will create a email. At uh, that time, they didn't have emails, but I'll, I'll write some messaging. I'll write a direct response message letter and we'll mail it out. And if it converts, give me a percentage of this. And this is how Jay Abraham began. And then he started building upon it by adding different strategies and different kinds of ways of generating income for his clients and working on percentage and profit and then moved on to doing high-end consulting fees and so forth. The discussion that I want to talk about today is the opportunity that you have to kind of follow the same footsteps as someone like Jay Abraham, and that is this book right here, The Copywriter's Guide to Getting Paid by Roy Fur. Roy Fur is a client and friend of mine, and we have been involved with a number of different projects, and he got his start in the world of business through copywriting. Copywriting, the ability to write something that is a persuasive message that will influence the buying decision, is one of the most valuable skills that you can have in business. I always mention this. Direct response marketing, copywriting, and consultative selling are three core skills because Peter Drucker mentioned that marketing and innovation are the primary functions of a business and all other initiatives are expenses because your goal is to create products and services that are needed and useful and get it out into the marketplace. So thus, if you have the ability to communicate effectively and persuade effectively, you're going to get more of your product and service into the marketplace and into the hands of the prospective buyer and into the fulfillment of service that your clients are looking for to their benefit, to your benefit, and everybody wins. So thus, my recommendation here is if you're looking to start a business, consider starting out a freelance or copywriter freelance-based business because two things will happen. Number one, and we'll go through this video and discuss many elements and I'll show you how to scale the business, is number one, you'll develop your copywriting skills. Because in the process of doing this, and you can do this on the side, you don't have to jump in this full time. See, if I would go back and do this all again when I was in corporate and I had some guidance and the level of awareness and understanding that I have right now, I would do things a little different. Instead of doing side gigs of IT and doing things like building websites and so forth, I would focus more on creating powerful messaging and improving my communication and marketing skills to a higher degree and offering that as a service because that's where you get paid the most. See, you get paid the most to bring in sales, to bring in clients, to improve the quality of the current relationships that the business have with their clients by increasing lifetime client value. That means a client who maybe only spent five or $10,000 in a business, if you can go in and write some persuasive communication all throughout the sequence of nurturing the relationship and bring in an extra twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 per client, it can earn you a good percentage on that or a flat fee. So thus, that's a skill worth mastering. And then at a certain stage in my entrepreneurial endeavor, I went and started doing my own copywriting and freelance gigs to cultivate skills when it comes to sales and marketing. And that helped me tremendously when I was building my IT business. Now, granted, as I was building my IT business, I had to write persuasive emails. I had to communicate effectively. So I learned a thing or two when it came to copywriting. And I intentionally wanted to work closely with Roy Fur, and I've done work with the Abraham Group as well, to learn how to improve my communication skills when it comes to copywriting. So learning from someone like Jay Abraham or Roy Fur is one of the best investments that you can do as far as your time to learn copywriting, because we're talking about some of the best copywriters in the world here. Roy Fur has a very established and growing, rapidly growing copywriting business, and he's had added multiple streams of income as a result of copywriting and starting out as a copywriter. 
And this is not something that you have to be super masterful at in the beginning. All you have to do is you have to go out there, watch a couple videos, learn a couple training programs, and just learn a little bit on how to optimize someone's messaging and then go out and offer it as a service, small scale, increase their sales, improve their conversions from prospects to clients and so forth earn the credibility, build a case study in a portfolio of case studies and command higher fees and move into other business models, which I'll talk about in a moment. So what's the best type of copywriting and how do you get paid as a copywriter? The biggest distinction is you ask is uh, how close is it to the sale versus how far is it away from the sale? That's what you're interested in thinking about when you're writing copy. So far away from the sale includes things like search engine optimization, blog posts. And while you can get paid a fee for this, and you can even charge good money if uh, you find the right clients, the best way to make the money and improve your skill, because we're not just about making money here, we're about making our skills greater than, so improving our skill, is to do copy, is to write copy, is to optimize copy that is closer to making the financial transaction, involved with the financial transactions such as sales pages, emails on an email list, landing pages, offer pages, different kinds of point of sale related copy elements. That's where you can measure, that's where you can track, and that's where you can apply what you're learning to increase conversions. Now, if you realize that there's tons of opportunities here, then this can be a great place to start and build a business as well as something that you can add to your existing business portfolio of services. If you're a business to business service provider, then offering copywriting as a service can add another income stream while cultivating the skill and thus commanding higher fees and growing your businesses quite well. See, I always said this sales is the highest paid profession and copywriting is an aspect of selling writing persuasive emails is an aspect of selling. So if you improve in that ability and, today's world, this is very important because most communication is done online. And as a result of it, a lot of sales are being generated. And these sales are being generated based on persuasive copy, emails, ads, different kinds of information that we get words that are sequenced and set up in a certain way that motivate, inspire, uplift the prospect and client, help them identify that they have a pain that exists. And connect them to the solution that is available. Win, win, win for you, win for them and doing it in a way that stands out compared to the other messaging out there. All this is part of copywriting. So the closer you have copy to the sale where you can optimize, the more you are able to turn this into a very profitable business, because we're going to talk about various different kinds of business models related to this. So that's something you want to keep into consideration. Now, this book is available over on the link in the description. You can join Roy Fur's list, and I recommend that you do so because he's got a whole system set up for building freelance copywriters and so forth, and this is something that's of interest to you. I recommend you do that. How to get your first copywriting of freelance clients. So let's say you went out there and you studied some copywriting, and you feel confident now that you want to take on your first client. So the very first thing you can do is offer your gig. See, most businesses are under optimized when it comes to copy. You'll find lots of businesses out there that aren't using the best practices of the copy writing principles that you will learn at different conversion points of their marketing. And all you have to do is make a small proposition to them and say, look, I'm going to write something for you. And we're going to email it out to your list. If you're open to it, it's not going to be intrusive but I believe it's going to increase your conversions and it's going to further build your relationship with your clients. And as a result of this, if it works, I have a fee. You might be interested in acquiring me because I've got a number of different initiatives that I can roll out, but I just want you to try me out because I have faith and confidence that I have learned enough to make this work. I might not have a case study right now, but I can show you what I'm going to do. And you can see that it's very sound. And I realize that you might not have the time, energy, and resources to optimize this aspect of your copy, but I'm willing to do it for a fee, or we could talk about percentage, but I would like to try it out. 
Now, if you reach out to enough businesses, and you want to make sure that when you reach out to these businesses that the goal here is that you are going to potentially acquire other paid gigs from them. So you're making an offer here and really doing this kind of work for free, but it's not a lot of work. If you know what you're doing, small tweaks in copy have been known to create big conversions in profits. A while back, I had came across something called the four day cash machine by Frank Kern. If you're not familiar with Frank Kern, he's one of the best internet marketers out there. And he used to do this thing where they would send emails out or they would contact providers and they would work a deal with them and send these four emails out to their email list. And then based on the conversions, they would make money on the profits or split the profits. And then there was individuals that actually went out, took the four day cash machine, which was a series of emails incorporating some copywriting best practices and approached companies and build full time businesses just of these four day cash machine emails. So this goes to show you the power of good copy. Now, writing small emails that will convert might take you like 10 or 15 minutes to do. And I've done this to create profits and joint venture opportunities with my clients. But it can take you a while to learn. And a lot of people don't want to invest the time to learn what is involved with acquiring the skill. But if you make a commitment to do this, then this can be really valuable for you because not only can you do this for clients, but you'll be able to do this for your own business. So then you find some small gigs, you make the proposition. If they take you up on it and it converts, what you're looking to do is build a portfolio of case studies. You want to document your numbers. You want to track the conversions. You want to see how much revenue and profits you brought in, how much opportunity cost uh, you ate away, what were the expenses and so forth, so that you can take that information and put it into a presentation so you can acquire more clients. Or another way of doing it, if you don't want to do the work for free, is find some small copywriting gigs in businesses that have lots of opportunity for you to come back and do other copywriting gigs for them. Now, think broad spectrum here. You can, if you improve your ability to write better persuasive copy, then you can convert better clients, or I should say convert more clients for them, or you can nurture, help them nurture relationships with their existing clients, thus increasing lifetime value. You can help them prospect better because maybe their messaging on their website is not reaching their ideal prospect. And that's stated, you can help them optimize their copy in multiple areas of their business. We're talking their websites, their emails, their communications with their clients, what they say when they talk on the phone. To me, that is a form of copy because sometimes they read off scripts, different touch points on social media, their social media presence, what they say in their YouTube videos and in their Instagram posts. All of these are opportunities that can lead to sales. Remember, we're thinking about where does it lead to the sale? But if this copy is placed before a call to action or a buying decision, then you've got an opportunity. And if you can increase the numbers there, actually bring in money, then you're considered valuable. So some businesses and most businesses nowadays have online component uh, components are looking for those that are good at bringing in clients, obviously, because the primary function of the business is marketing innovation. So they will pay top dollar for those that can perform. See, we're not doing this kind of stuff to just say, okay, we're going to make it work and, and just kind of uh, trick them. This is actual concrete business building stuff that works. It's been proven over and over again. Many entrepreneurs come from a sales background. Sales has been one of the driving factors or my ability to sell has been a driving factor for my own success, my ability to write copy. And I might not do it in you know traditional copywriting sense, certain kinds of formulas and so forth, but I do know how to communicate effectively in emails, in phone calls, in text messages, whatever, to acquire clients. And this is all learned from practicing copywriting skills. In fact, when I was building my IT business and even during my consulting business earlier when I was transitioning out of my IT business, I took on a handful of clients in which I worked on their copy so that I could implement and improve my skills and turn those opportunities into paid on performance based earning that was very high. Now, one of the things that I'm a huge fan of is tracking time. I did a video on the finance spreadsheet. I recommend you watch it. I like to see where my time is going. And it's not just about, you know, putting in an amount of work and then getting paid for your time. It's about how much money are you bringing in for your time invested? So you may be put in five hours and if you got a number of percentage of profit deals where you're optimizing and 
those five hours lead into many thousands of dollars. See, because you have created maybe 20, 30, 40, 50,000 for the client, they have no problem paying you a few thousand dollars. So you can see how this adds up and scales accordingly, but you first have to acquire the skill and start with a small group of clients and really work on cultivating the skill. But this is not a nebulous skill. This is a skill that can be tracked, measured, because you can compare their old copy to your existing copy and you can measure accordingly. So you can find companies that have various elements of communication that is under optimized and you can reach out to them and take on a small little gig. Say, look, for a couple hundred dollars, I'll do this. Or maybe they're even offering small little gigs. And by taking on the small gig, whatever it is that they're offering, you can position yourself in the company and then go in and make propositions to sell other things. Because here's the thing. People do business with those that they like and trust. And sometimes you have to look for the opportunity to start the relationship. So you start the relationship with them by taking on a small gig. And then you look at other areas in their business where they're not implementing best practices for copy. And you implement it over there. And you get paid a percentage. And test what you apply a small aspect of it to their marketing. See, it doesn't have to be big tests. There are different elements that convert into clients at the point of purchase could be something as simple as one landing page versus another landing page. You can say to them, well, you're generating X with this landing page. What if we do a split test, send 50% of this traffic, or if you're not comfortable with that, send 10% of the traffic. And let's look at the numbers of this custom page that I have built. And if these numbers increase, then I've got more ideas and you could just pay me a percentage on the increase and we'll put it in hundred percent and we'll cap it at a certain amount. So now after you've gotten a base of copywriting or freelance clients, the key is to go out and find other companies. So building a case study is very important. Now, if you want to turn this into a full fledged business where you're doing this, you can make really good money doing it. Many have, as mentioned earlier, built their whole career on this foundation of offering copywriting services to companies. The key is building a case study and by having case studies on different clients, you can approach different businesses without, you know, relying on just what you say to get the deal. You can show them the proof, the, the numbers, the conversions and so forth, and what you can do with them. The results of this is commanding higher fees, acquiring more clients and so forth. One of the things after you've got a certain level of case studies is you want to reach out to people. And nowadays it's easier than ever before. You've got LinkedIn, you've got Instagram, you've got Facebook. You can reach out to different companies via email and just get them on a phone call and present to them the different things that you've done. And, you know, one of the things you want to develop is your ability to self consultatively, because this is where people are going to do business with you because they like you and trust you and how you present yourself is going to be very important. So books, and I did discussions on them that I recommend you watch way of the wolf by Jordan Belfort spin selling by Neil Rackham and speak to win by Brian Tracy. Those were great discussions to help you on the phone or when you're doing presentations and even Pitch Anything by Oren Clef. So as Roy says, ultimately as a copywriter, the real money is made from working multiple times with an individual client. So if you've got a full-time job and you want to start a little business on the side, copywriting, being a freelance copywriter might be quite ideal for you because all you really need is a couple clients. And if you can convert really well, you can command higher fees and you can make good money on percentage and profit. Heck, if you do this right, you can even replace your entire day income. And there are copywriters that have done this and have chosen to stay in their day jobs because they like it, but at least they have the option to move into doing it full time. And they don't really need to do it full time because they've really replaced their day job with a side income from copywriting as a result of freelancing. Why percentage on profit and so forth. But if you get some good clients, just a few clients, one or two even, and you continuously optimize various aspects of their business, they will increase their sales and revenues. They will give you a percentage of that and it will open up more doors for you. It'll help you build a case study and it will create more opportunities because obviously as a result of that, they'll reinvest the profits back into business provided that they do so. So you want a company that meets that criteria and they will create more projects for you in which you can practice and grow and implement your copywriting skills. And you'll also build a reputation with them. You'll get to know them better and you'll build really good relationships with them. 
and very important you'll understand their processes see one of the things that happens when you're offering freelance copywriting gigs is you don't have full control over what happens within their office okay? so you need to run a promo but there's multiple teams involved with whatever managing the products inventory a lot of different things you want all these things to move smoothly so the more of a relationship you build with your clients, the better you have as far as influence to optimize their internal operations of their business. And you're also building valuable business building skills, which can parlay you into a very profitable consulting career should you choose to go down this route, not just in consultive copywriting or consulting on copywriting, but consulting on business management, consulting on business operations, consulting on just a business consultant on the revenue and sales side, someone like Jay Abraham who does that revenue and sales side consulting and commands really high fees. You will know their process and you'll be able to help them with that, optimize it so that your campaigns will run a lot smoother. Now, some of the stuff I'm communicating at a very high level. So you're probably thinking like, how do you do this? Well, there's a lot of details to this and I have acquired a lot of experience as well as Roy Fur over the years doing this and I recommend studying his stuff and getting on his list because as mentioned he is teaching this kind of stuff on becoming freelancers freelance copywriters and building full-fledged businesses how do you turn this into a full-fledged business well let's get into this little discussion about this he says what you want is a client that will pay you by project depending on the size of your project it can be two thousand three thousand ten thousand twenty five thousand dollars that's his standard fee five figures and what you're really looking to do, as he says, your fee should be big enough that it covers your overhead and the hourly rate or whatever it is that you want, but it is not designed to make you wealthy. The real wealth is created by doing the percentage or getting royalties. So how does that work? Let's say you're running a promotion for a company and they bring you in and they say, okay, in order, you say, in order to, for me to write the copy and create the sales letters, and by the way, this applies to sales letters, emails, landing pages, and the sky's the limits, but it's always usually done at the point of purchase. You say to them, okay, it's going to cost $5,000 for me to put this all in place. I'll put it in place, and then I would like a uh, percentage on the sales you get. So those would be the royalties. So let's say it's a $1,000 product. Maybe you might ask for it, depending on their margins, 20%, right? So you make couple hundred dollars for every sale up to a whole year so they run the promotion they get a whole bunch of sales and you get uh, two hundred dollars off that off each sale they make on top of your consulting fee or your fixed fee so that's where you make the real money your time invested in putting together the landing pages writing the copy researching and doing everything right is incentivizing you to do a really good job you want to be incentivized so you're going to figure out the best ways to convert for them because then you're going to get bigger royalties. So that's how you make the most money through the royalties. Now, when you've got a relationship with them, I'm going to throw in some more details of how you can get more work from your clients and you can further build a relationship with them and further make this win-win and turn this into higher degree of profit centers, more profit centers for you. And I've done this through various consulting deals and I want to share them with you. So first of all, you can help them convert more of their prospects. So they might bring you in for helping them optimize their sales pages and so forth, but they might realize, or you might realize that they have a whole bunch of prospects that they have sitting in client databases or in certain kinds of lists, email lists and so forth, but they have not been successful in converting those prospects into clients. You can figure out some email sequences. You can figure out some communications, some different kinds of strategies to convert those prospects into client and get a percentage on that. You can help them generate more referrals. See, a lot of times businesses don't really orchestrate this very powerful concept of getting a referral. A lot of my IT business was built on referrals and I put a lot of emphasis on getting referrals. Why? Because clients, who are very happy with the service of a business are very likely to refer their friends, family, other businesses, and so forth. But a lot of businesses don't ask for referrals. So if you can set up something where you can put copy in place, post, purchase, referral, asking emails or whatnot to help them get more referrals, you can get a percentage on those referrals. Now you can also help them create a backend and increase lifetime client value. Watch the video in the finance spreadsheet and you'll understand this a little deeper. Backend essentially means that they've got a number of different products that they offer. 
So because you've got a relationship with them and you've helped them convert that front end product really well, you can figure out other kinds of ways of servicing that client base by creating products or services or bundling and doing different kinds of things and partnering with them to put that all together as an initiative, throw in your copywriting expertise and increase the lifetime client value for them and thus make higher fees and percentage of profit. Also, you can consider strategic alliances and endorsers. See, doing these kind of deals with companies that have a huge amount of influence can be really valuable for you because they will open up their contacts to you and you'll have access to uh, endorsers and others that will bring you in for doing the kind of work for them also. So this sets you up for the long term. You can run their paid advertising. So once you've gotten really good at copywriting and you want to try hands at paid advertising, if you know you can convert and you've set up their systems properly and you know your numbers and uh, this is something you want to implement, they will be open to this. And essentially Facebook ad campaigns, Google ad campaigns, you can run their campaigns and again, you can make money on the percentage side, fee and percentage also. Set up and organize special events. So this is something going a little broader spectrum here, but this is how you monetize and get even more yield out of your relationships with your clients. And that is by helping their prospects and clients come together nicely and get to know each other, which will result in other sales. You can organize special events, meetups with their clients and so forth, or special events. You see this happen in industries. They do trade events, trade shows, masterminds and meetups. See, if your business has, or if your client has a whole bunch of clients that can benefit from meeting each other for whatever reason, based on the product or service, and it'll build a really close relationship between the brand and the clients, then why not get them together as a special event? You can also find them qualified lists. See, what are you really getting paid to do? You're getting paid to, as a copywriter, bring in more sales, help them convert more prospects into clients, get them more clients, marketing and innovation. And one of the ways to do this is to help them actually go out and find qualified lists of people. Maybe there's others that have access to their prospects that they're looking for, and you can help them find these lists, creating better client education. And by the way, this is a, a very slim discussion on getting more clients. I did a whole deep discussion on Jay Abraham's book, Money Making Secrets. And I put a link in the description, the Mr. X book, which we cover this kind of stuff in detail, as well as the other book that I discussion I did, Getting Everything You Can Out of All You've Got. I'll put a link in the description for that. Creating better client education, because what really gets the prospect or client to buy? It's the copywriting, yes, because you're communicating persuasively. But what you're doing in your copy is you're educating them. So there's different things you could do to help as a result of what you have learned about their prospects. You can create videos for them so they can send to their prospects to educate them on why they should do business. And all these things lead to sales, brochures, different kinds of books, trainings, webinars for their clients or their prospects to help them educate on how to use the products and services better, which can potentially lead into backend sales, help them communicate more frequently with their existing clients. Because what happens when you communicate frequently with existing clients is you stay under their radar, you support them better, and it potentially leads to more sales. You can help them implement phone sales, create larger units of sale, which means that, look, if they've got products and services that they're selling, they're, they're potentially not selling it in uh, as much maximize, or they, they might not be maximizing the deal that they get selling it to in the quantity that they're selling it. And they can offer larger bundles or combinations at a discount price and make actually more profit on it by doing it and offering it to the client at a reduced rate. So these are some ideas I'm throwing out there. Creating combinations would be the same thing, combo packages. You buy this, you get this, and you get this for a special price. Point of sale promotions, like one-click upsells, or uh, you've seen this one-time offers, usually done in the internet business world. This is also done in the offline world. So you can see this when you go to different places. They might say, well, would you be interested in insurance for that? Right. So that's something that works. Bundling products and services together, saying, well, not only uh, would I help you with whatever fixing your computers, if you're, if you're fixing computers, but I will also uh, in install this nice virus protection utility, which I recommend, and we'll do it for one flat fee. And maybe you get a percentage on that sale from the company that you did the deal with that offers the virus protection service. 
Now, why am I saying all these things? I'm doing this to stimulate your mind because copywriting or freelancing is one of the ways to get started in a relationship with a business if you're doing consulting or if you're looking to build a business. Consider being a business-to-business -business provider of services and products. You can do this. You can make good profits or you can build a little team to help you do this together and you can create a little firm doing this and it can be a lot of fun. It can create some income streams for you, but this is thinking creatively. A lot of entrepreneurs don't think like this and they think, okay, I'm just going to sell copywriting services or I'm just going to build websites, but they don't realize again, going back to the beginning that most money is made by helping others find more prospects and convert clients. And there's many ways of doing it. And if you can do that, you'd make more money on referral fees or affiliate deals or percentage on profit and creating new offers for the existing clients. When you work with a provider, a service provider or a business, you see opportunities that they might not be see or uh, seeing or they might not be executing it upon uh, executing upon because for whatever reason, they don't have the resources they don't have the time or they just don't want to. If you see that opportunity, you can create a deal with them. See, some of the things that I've done in my past as a result of implementing these things we're talking about is I, sound, I found opportunities that exist with my consulting clients to create other offers that they weren't even considering creating. And I said, I'll do all the work for you. I'll create the offer. I'll write the email. I'll do all these things for you. All we got to do is send it out to your email list. And all you got to do is agree to it if you feel it's the right fit. And all I want is uh, X percentage on it. And if it was a right fit and they weren't serving that segment of the market or they weren't serving them the well as well as I could with the additional product that I was creating and they were leaving money on the table, then they would say yes. And it was a very easy way for me to create a profit center. And some of these have created ongoing royalties that I still receive because I created them many years ago. So in summary, with all these different things that you can do, which starts on a foundation of being a freelancer, ideally in the copywriting space, because you can then going back all the way to the beginning, cultivate the skill, one of the best highest paid skills that you can have related to direct response, marketing, consultative and selling and copywriting, the three powerhouse areas that I always mention, you will cultivate the skill. You will build a business around it. You will also acquire the skills so you can build side businesses around it. Sky's the limits. And you can get paid and create a business on the side doing this. Now, how do you get paid? What are the ways you can get paid? You can get paid hourly fee, percentage on profit, fee plus percentage on profit, monthly retainer. Which one is better? The answer is it depends. If you want to get paid hourly fee in the beginning, that might be something to keep into consideration as you get better and better. And then you can prove your worth and then you can move into percentage and profit. And if you are in high demand, you might say, look, I want a fee plus a percentage on profit. That's what Roy Fur does. Or you could do monthly retainer. How does that work? Well, maybe you, you've got a whole bunch of projects, but they want to retain you to look at their copy or different points in their communication a couple times a month. You can say, well, for a couple thousand dollars, you can retain me and you can send me an email whenever you'd like within reason. And I would look at whatever kind of communications you have and you can earn a retainer like that. Now, once you are looking to convert this, once you start creating some success and you say, well, I want to turn this into a full fledged business and scale this even more. One of the things you want to keep into consideration is raising your value. And you also want to keep it into consideration while you're going about doing this, because why would you raise your value? You raise your value so that you can acquire bigger deals. See, maybe you might consider working for companies that will pay way more on the percentage side or they have higher volume so they can give you more money. Maybe working with a company and making 10% off a hundred thousand a year will create a nice side income for you. But working with a bigger company that's doing a million dollars a year, giving you 10% will earn you quite a substantial side income or a company that's work making 10 million a year and you're getting 10% of that will earn you a really big income. So what do you want to do? Consider this as a long-term strategy by raising your value. So what do you do? Make a list of different companies that you would like to work with that you see this potentiality with and understand that you might not have the credibility. You might not have the case studies right now, but you're poising yourself up for this. And this is something that I've done and you want to get in contact with them. You want to build a relationship with them. You don't want to try to make offers to them right away, but you want to see how you can cultivate these relationships over the long term. Maybe you want to be part of their groups or masterminds or their 
different kinds of organizations that they're part of so you can build a relationship with them and offer value. Remember, this is a long-term initiative, so you're not looking to sell right away or make offers right away. You're just looking to build relationships. Or you can just keep into regular calls with them, have regular calls and information emails that you can send to them by offering them some value. Now, make sure it's value uh, for them because if you're just going to want to jump on a call with them and send them information they don't see it as value, uh, you're going to come off as a little irritating. So who is it that you want to work with over the long term? And how do you poise yourself up to be able to create value so that you can, when the opportunity arises, if it arises, be able to work for that company or another company because this is a portfolio of relationships that you're building. Another thing you can do is establish yourself by the following. Writing a book, writing a blog, creating articles for publication and industry websites. This raises up your value. Doing YouTube videos, this positions yourself, demonstrates your expertise, builds an audience, relationships, and you get positioned as a person of authority. Creating products and services and establish your expertise to build authority and become a recognized expert. Maybe you can do seminars, you can train people in copywriting, you could create digital products and different kinds of membership sites to offer your expertise. Through there, you'll acquire clients. You'll not only make an income from that, but you'll acquire clients. Speaking is another way of green, gaining credibility. You can offer information nights. You could speak in events. You can share what you have done at events via your case studies. See, that's the beautiful thing of having case studies and having unique ways. As you get deeper into this, you'll come up with unique ways of creating profits for your clients, optimizing businesses, and people would love to hear that while you're on the platform. I've done a number of speaking gigs where I've shared my ways of doing things and it was very well received and it resulted in consulting deals. So again, I hope you found this video very useful if you're considering building a business, starting from scratch. Uh, take my recommendation up on becoming a copywriter on the side, cultivating the skill, implementing the skill, and turning it into a, a long-term business. It is one of the best ways to do this. A lot of entrepreneurs who have created a lot of success in their life come from a sales background, copywriting background, direct response marketing background, including Roy Fur. Check out his stuff. I'll put the link in the description where you can get the book and join and follow his information because he is teaching how to become a freelance copywriter as well as build freelance businesses because he's built a very successful freelance copywriting business incorporating some of these monetization models as I have also as part of my activities that I do in the various businesses that I'm involved with. And this is something that we came together and wanted to put together for you because we want you to have something that you can turn into a side income source so you can enjoy. And one of the beautiful things about being really good at copywriting is you can get paid on performance. You can command higher fees, which doesn't mean that you have to invest a lot of time doing this. You just have to get really good at it. And like with anything, it requires practice, testing, and implementation. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.